My name is Monte Montgomery, and I'll be doing a poetry explication on Sure. You can ask me a personal question by Diane Burns. Starting with the overall summary, um, the narrator is speaking with another individual, but the other person's questions are just implied. They aren't um, shown in the poem. Uh, so you can see that there's a lot of social criticism. Uh, it's kind of satirical and a little bit of comedy in the way that the narrator is approaching the questions of the uh, stereotyping that is being presented to the narrator. And I can I think that was her point in trying to convey these messages with a little of a comedic twist. Um, also showing how the societal norms of what it's like to be a so-called Indian and how no group of people are just a monolith that all fit under one umbrella. And I think that's kind of what uh, the narrator was trying to get across. It's just basically a conversation being had and just showing the narrator's response, but not the other person in question. So it's just basically going over um, Indian stereotypes, what Indians are supposedly uh what they supposedly look like and the activities that they encounter and, you know, a whole bunch of stereotypes in this conversation. So I think it's best that we kind of dive right into it because it will explain itself. Starting with the first stanza. How do you do? No, I am not Chinese. No, not Spanish. No, I am an American Indian, Native American. So right off the bat, you can tell that the narrator is can gauge that the other person they're speaking with is trying to figure them out. Is this person Spanish? What is this person? So the narrator kind of beats them to the punch and lets them know, no, I'm an American Indian. I'm Native American. To our second stanza. No, not from India. No, not Apache. No, not Navajo. No, not Sioux. No, we are not extinct. Yes, Indian. So from here, you know, all the misconceptions about Indians. Uh, some people who are not well studied think Indian means from India, when all Indian means is the indigenous to this land. And also, once you get past not being from India, there's always the most popular tribe names that are associated with Indians. And that's what the narrator alluded to by saying, no, not Apache, no, not Navajo. And, you know, just kind of reaffirming that, yes, I am an Indian, but I don't have to be these things to be an Indian. On the next stanza, oh, so that's where you got these high cheekbones. Your great grandmother, huh? An Indian princess, huh? Hair down to there? Let me guess, Cherokee? In this stanza, you can tell how the physical characteristics are stereotyped about Indians, about have to have long hair or going back to Pocahontas and being a princess and, you know, all of these stereotypes, having long, straight hair that you got from your grandmother. It's just another one of those stereotypes. And uh, it's kind of <laughs> the narrator's beating it to the punch speaking on this. Next stanza. Oh, so you've had an Indian friend that close? Because you know how from what I get from that is people always want to relate to what they don't know. So they're especially if they feel like they're making you uncomfortable. So they're trying to tell this Indian narrator about their Indian friend, I guess, as a means to relate. Next stanza. Oh, so you've had an Indian lover that tight? <laughs> And uh, it seems as if she's, as the other participant in the conversation is continuing to speak, she's kind of being, the narrator's kind of being sarcastic and catching on to how much she's trying to allude to having relationships with Indian people. Next stanza. Oh, so you've had an Indian servant that much? And I'm not really sure what the narrator was trying to get out of this. Was it uh, a guilt thing or was it um, 
you know, it's kind of hard to gather what they meant by that specific stanza. Um, so let's move on to the next. Yeah, it was awful what you guys did to us. It's real decent of you to apologize. No, I don't know where you can get peyote. No, I don't know where you can get Navajo rugs real cheap. In this stanza, she starts off by saying, you know, it is awful what you guys did to us. It's real decent of you to apologize, almost in a sarcastic way, you know, uh, trying to respond to the acknowledgement of what the other speaker said. And then towards the end of the stanza, he goes some more uh, stereotyping on. Obviously, since you're Indian, you must know where to get these things from. <laughs> and the narrators, you know, making it clear that I have no idea just because I'm an Indian don't, doesn't mean I know what all Indian, other Indians are doing. Next line. No, I didn't make this. I bought it at Bloomingdale's. Once again, this line is referring to just because I'm an Indian, you assume that I make everything by hand. I don't live in today's society. And that's what the narrator was alluding to with this line. Next stanza. Thank you. I like your hair, too. I don't know if anyone knows whether or not Cher is really Indian. No, I didn't make it rain tonight. And, you know, everyone's heard about the rain dance that Indians do. And just like when you're a part of something, they assume that you would know everybody else and what they have, you know, affiliations with. And that's what uh, the narrator is alluding to in this stanza. Next stanza. Yeah. Uh-huh. Spirituality. Uh-huh. Yeah. Spirituality. Uh-huh. Mother Earth. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Spirituality. In this stanza, the narrator is just uh, basically losing interest in the conversation and just it seems like it's just telling the other speaker what they want to hear at this point because the narrator seems to not have any interest in this conversation. Uh, next stanza. No, I didn't major in archery. Yeah, a lot of us drink too much. Some of us can't drink enough. Alluding to more stereotypes. You know, you saw the Indians in movies and TV shows and they had bow and arrows. So I must assume that since you're an Indian, you must have bow and arrows. And then they show how the drunken Indian, this is all Hollywood media propaganda. And uh, the narrator is alluding to this. Last stanza. This ain't no stoic look. This is my face. Alluding to the physical characteristics and on how the, they said that Indians always had a stone face. You couldn't read it, read their emotions. And the narrator was basically saying, I'm not trying to look like this. This is just how I look. Ah, OK, now to the tone. The tone has a. Um, it's kind of comical in a, um, you know, uh, sarcastic way but with a serious overtone because we're talking about you know racist stereotypes real history in america so these are not a it's not a plain matter but the narrator kind of if anything kind of jokingly speaks about the other person they're having a conversation with uh the diction is informal since it's a you know it's narrative so um it's pretty informal because it's just a conversation. Uh, nothing, you know, out of the norm. It's just a basic conversation being narrated about a serious topic. Um, imagery, uh, wasn't much imagery used outside of trying to compare the facial features of the Indians to give you a picture of what they look like, uh, what is assumed that they all look like. But, um, there wasn't any real imagery used to describe places or other things. It was more of a straightforward conversation piece. Um, symbols. Some of the symbols used were, you know, the stoic look that Indians are said to have, um, the Navajo rugs that, you know, Indians were uh, known to make. Um, it's not much really... Uh, on the symbol side, they didn't 
really have to compare anything or use anything. It was just straightforward conversation. Uh, and the figures of speech uh, kind of, I didn't really see any metaphors or hyperboles, um, no alliteration. Like I said, there was any, there wasn't any rhyming, there wasn't any comparing. Um, it was more of just jumping to conclusions. Well, not jumping to conclusions, more of um, the narrator understanding the ignorance of the person that they were speaking with and kind of making fun of them, you know, in the questions that they were asking. Um, so I didn't really see any figures of speech that uh, stood out or, you know, from the typical poetry terms. Um, the rhyme scheme, there was no rhyme scheme um, because there was no pattern for rhyme. It was really just a story. Um, there was no rhyme scheme or rhyme pattern at all. And this was a free verse, open form poem. Uh, it didn't follow a pattern. It just was a conversation and, um, you know, and it was straight to the point. Uh, of course, this was a narrative poem telling us a story about the conversation that was had. Uh, all in all, uh, it's a very straightforward poem. Um, I understood off of the first reading what the narrator was trying to get across. And it was about, you know, how the, the Indians are stereotyped racially, you know, and as far as their activities and most of all of it comes from TV and media programming, not from actually knowing an Indian. And I think that's what uh, the narrator was trying to get across is that we aren't all just like any other group of people, just one way and do only these specific things, especially nowadays. This isn't <laughs> the 1400s. So uh, I think that's what uh, the narrator wanted to get across. And uh, that's my explication of this poem. Once again, this was sure you can ask me a personal question by Diane Burns.